Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and heard the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 25th of September. Residents vote in second phase of elections in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Sri Lankan president dissolves parliament to clear way for November 14 polls. And dengue cases rise in Nepal as monsoon rainfall halt. And now for all the details. Voters in India's Jammu and Kashmir cast their ballots in the second of three phases of regional elections on Wednesday, the first provincial polls being held in a decade in the Himalayan region. Voting in the current phase was held across 26 electoral constituencies, including Srinagar, where around 9 million people were registered to vote for the assembly elections. Key leaders including former Chief Minister and JKNC Vice Chairman Umar Abdullah, BJP State Unit President Ravindra Rena and Congress State Unit President Tariq Hamid Kara were among the fray of candidates contesting in the second phase of the elections. We have put our work on our work. We have to do our work on our work. We have to do our work on our work. वो तो उसी लिए डालते हैं अपना नुमाइंदा चुनने के लिए अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट अभी यहाँ पर बहुत है उस वजह से यहाँ के जो छोटे नौजवान हमारे यूथ है तो वो ड्रग एडिक्शन में फंस गए हैं ड्रग एडिक ले रहे हैं अभी हम चाहते हैं कि हम इस मतलब किसी ऐसे कैंडिडेट को हम लाए सामने ताकि ये ड्रग एडिक्शन पर भी रोक लग सके a delegation of foreign diplomats from at least 15 countries including United States, Singapore and South Korea also visited Jammu and Kashmir to witness the second phase of polls in the federally administered territory. India's foreign ministry had invited top diplomats from several countries. They said they were happy to witness citizens exercising their democratic right to vote and do comparisons to electoral systems in their own countries. The third and final phase of election is scheduled for 1st of October and votes will be counted on 8th of October with results expected the same day. Weeks after India's Foreign Minister S. S. Shankar said India and China have sorted almost 75% of their border dispute, he said New Delhi has difficult history with Beijing and added with 75% statement he is only talking about the disengagement part. Jay Shankar, during his interaction at Asia Society Policy Institute on Tuesday said India has a difficult history with China including the conflict in 1962. He said while it took years to reach a modus operandi and multiple agreements for developing a relationship and ensuring peace in the border area following the 1962 war, all were violated when Beijing moved a large number of forces to the LAC. The Indian Foreign Minister acknowledged that much of the disengagement at friction points has been managed. However, he emphasized that challenges persist, particularly concerning patrolling rights along the border. He stressed the importance of de-escalation as the next step in improving relations with China and until peace and tranquility are restored on the border, it will be difficult to advance the broader India-China relationship. Uh, despite these very explicit uh, agreements, uh, we, ha we saw that the Chinese, in, we were all in the middle of COVID at that time, if you remember, uh, moved large number of forces in violation of these agreements uh, to the line of actual control. And uh, this once troops, and we responded in kind, and once troops were deployed very close up, which is very dangerous, uh, you know, it was likely a mishap would happen, and, uh, and it did happen. Uh, so there was a clash, and... Uh, a number of troops died on either side. Uh, and that has since, uh, uh, in a sense, overshadowed uh, the relationship. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has confirmed that the agreement with the International Monetary Fund was in the final stage of approval. Sharif, after attending the UNGS summit on Tuesday, said there's an IMF board meeting on Wednesday. We have fulfilled all their conditions which were very strict. He profusely thanked China, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, saying that without their support this would not have been possible. 
The IMF's executive board will discuss Pakistan's $7 billion bailout program, allaying fears of a prolonged delay in much-needed funds for the country. The South Asian nation struck a staff-level agreement with the global lender in June, but board approval for the 37th month program has been pending since then. The tough measures taken to win the approval, including hike in essentials and taxes, has hit all sections of the society. And in a show of solidarity, retired government employees in POJK recently took to the streets to protest the government's decision to cut pensions for widowed women. They claim that this move is a direct result of IMF-mandated austerity measures, a report. Retired government workers in Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir staged a protest outside the Secretariat in Muzaffarabad recently to express their outrage over what they termed IMF-dictated pension cuts. The protesters flagged concern that the government's decision to terminate pensions for widowed women is going to further worsen the dire situation these vulnerable individuals face amidst escalating economic challenges and rising inflation. दो मताल में हमारे पड़े हैं मैं जिसमें हमने ये कहा कि बेवा बेटी जो है उसकी पेंशन इन्होंने बंद की है ये पेंशन इनकी बाल होने चाहिए जब तक के पाकिस्तान में वो बाल है उस वक्त तक ये बाल रखनी चाहिए और दो ढाई सौ केस है ये सारा दो ढाई सौ केस है ये गरीब ख्वाती ने इस वक्त कोई ख्वाती ना आई भी हुई है यहाँ हमारे पास इस वक्त जो वहाँ पर मौजूद भी हैं इन में से दूसरे नंबर पर ये है कि हमने ये कहा था कि ये जो आपका दस फीसद बकाया है यकम यकम अप्रैल बीस सौ बाईस से लेकर तीस जून तक है ये हमें ये तीन माह का बकाया दे दिया जाए The protesters also asserted that pensioners in POJK are being denied the recent pension increase announced by Pakistan's Prime Minister. They lamented the authorities in the occupied region are least bothered about their concerns and are only there for economic depredations to fill Pakistan's treasuries. Sri Lanka's newly elected president Anura Kumara Desanayake on Tuesday dissolved the parliament to clear the way for a snap general elections in the debt-ridden country. The parliamentary election will be held on November 14. The government gazette notification said, adding that the next parliament would convene on 21st of November. Desanayake won the presidential election this past weekend, which gave the Marxist-leaning politician a key role in deciding the future of reforms in the island country that is slowly emerging from a crushing financial crisis. But his coalition, the National People's Party, has just three of 225 seats in the current parliament, prompting him to dissolve the legislature to seek a fresh mandate there for his policies. The move has, however, got mixed reactions, with some labelling the snap elections as another massive expenditure. <laughs> पाल में तो विशेष रोल कर रहा है ना वो पाल ने आ अतिकरण डे अलूट चांदियाँ तीला अलूट पाल ने आ कतिकरण वाला वड़ा होना ही केलेगी तेरा। Meanwhile, the island nation on Tuesday also got its third woman prime minister after the Sanayake appointed college professor and first-time lawmaker Harini Amarasuraya as the new prime minister. Meanwhile, veteran legislator of the Sanayake's JVP Vijaya Hirath was given foreign affairs and public security among other portfolios. The president himself has taken the key finance portfolio as Sri Lanka looks to emerge from its most punishing economic crisis in 70 years and its first debt default while he keeps the promise to aid the nation's poor. Moving on, Bangladesh Chief Advisor Mohammad Yunus met US President Joe Biden on Tuesday on the sidelines of the 79th United Nations General Assembly and affirmed the close partnership between the United States and Bangladesh, which is rooted in shared democratic values and strong people-to-people -people ties. A statement by the White House said President Biden welcomed further engagement between the two governments and offered continued U.S. support as Bangladesh implements its new reform agenda. The press release from the Bangladesh site stated that during the meeting, President Biden expressed U.S. government's full support to Bangladesh and the Professor Yunus-led interim government. Joe Biden is a one-on-one meeting. 
এটা ইউএন হেডকোয়ার্টার্সেই ওই অন দ্য সাইড লাইন অফ দি ইউএন জেনারেল অ্যাসেম্বলি মিটিং তো ওই মিটিংটা আমরা বলবো যে খুবই একটা সাকসেসফুল মিটিং ছিল স্যার বাংলাদেশের যে যে রেভলিউশন হলো সেগুলোর ব্যাপারে বাইডেনের সাথে কথা বলেছেন এবং বাইডেন বাংলাদেশকে তার ফুল সাপোর্ট জানিয়েছেন Meanwhile several protesters also staged a protest outside the hotel where Yunus was staying over the alleged attacks on minorities in Bangladesh and demanded him to step down as they claim he gained power with dirty politics they said Yunus does not care about minorities and added he cannot represent the country of 117 million at such global forums as he was not elected but rather appointed by protesters of student uprising Moving on. Nepal has continued to witness surge in dengue cases as the monsoon rainfall has paused for about a week now setting grounds for mosquitoes to breed. Serpentine queues of people with symptoms has become a common scene at the hospitals. Nepal since January this year has recorded 11,545 confirmed cases of dengue while the death toll stands at 6. Authorities have labeled districts including Kaski, Kathmandu, Chitwan, Gorkha and Lalitpur in the red zone. There is no vaccine or drug that specifically treats dengue which is common in South Asia during June to September monsoon season. It is caused by the Aedes aegypti mosquito which thrives in stagnant water. Symptoms include high fever, joint pain and vomiting. An official at the Sukhra Raj Tropical and Infectious Disease Hospital said on an average they are registering 10 to 20 dengue positive people. Manjan ab daily lagbhag lagbhag hazur ko 15 dekhi 19 dana 20 dana auncha. Ti madhe bariko ti cha dengue dengue ne positive. Ah teste dengue ho hazur ko. Ab 30 dana 35 dana fever auncha ni kahile 40 dana fever auncha ni. Ab tesma hazur ko ab dengue positive dekheko. Ah ডেঙ্গু পজিটিভ হাজার গো দশ দেখি পনেরো পিস মাস যত আউট সাইড ডেঙ্গু তেতি দ্যাটস অল ইন টু নাইট এডিশন ইউ উইল সি ইউ সেম টাইম টুমারো
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.